PayPal. So, PayPal, PayPal, PayPal. I have some good news, really good news. The good news with PayPal is this one is starting to kick into gear. It's up 7.7% in just the past two trading days now at this point in time, right? We had that big flush right after earnings, and it's clear as day every dip in the stock is getting bought up right now, right? And you got to ask yourself, who's buying? Who's buying? Is it the company buying now? The share buyback? Is that starting to roll? Is it Altimeter Capital, Brad Gerstner? Is he starting to load up on shares? Who's, who's buying? I can tell you, to get that move just in the last couple of days is a pretty strong move. It's a lot of buying pressure to put out there, right? Now, we did flush out a lot of the weak hands after that earnings. Weak hands is just kind of seen of it's people that don't have a lot of conviction, either strategies or in, in a particular stock, right? And let's be honest, there was a lot of people that bought PayPal going in those earnings thinking it was just going to go up. Didn't really want to be around long term. And so we had to flush those weak hands out. And we did that the day after earnings, right? We flushed out those weak hands and that was what it was, right? A shakeout refers to a sudden and sharp decrease in the stock price, uh, the price of a stock or market, followed by an equally quick recovery. This is pretty much exactly what we're seeing in PayPal now at this point in time, right? That quick flush and then straight back up. So, you know... And it's not even like the market's been that amazing. I mean, technically, the NASDAQ should be down today. So it's not like it's really being helped by the market. It's just it's running its own race, right? And so the interesting thing with PayPal now at this point in time, right, is I think we've had a lot of mega longs loading up on this stock, like myself, for instance, right? And I don't think a lot of these folks like myself are going to sell as the stock starts to go up and it reaches 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. I don't think, I don't think. A lot of these folks are going to cash, just like myself. This, if PayPal was $120 a share tomorrow, double what it is today, I sell zero shares. Zero shares, right? And so overall, I think it's going to be a very fun next 24 months. We'll see. I could be wrong about it. A massive recession could screw up everything. But as long as we don't get a massive recession, I think I'm right on this one. And I think, you know, it'll go to where it's going. One stock that is ridiculous right now, one of the most bullish stocks in the entire stock market is Palantir. Palantir up again today, another 2.75%. This is ultra, ultra, ultra bullish. I mean, you know, with, when you get these moves after moves after moves, a lot of people start to consider, let me go ahead, let me take profits. It's had a heck of a move. Let me go ahead and cash out 25% of my shares, 50% of my shares, 75% of my shares, all my shares. There's a lot of people that do that, right? And they kind of look at it a little bit more like you would at the casino, right? Uh, let me take some chips off the table. That's the way a lot of people would put it, right? And so when you have a move, a parabolic move like Palantir, that's usually what you would have. But where are the sellers? Where are the big profit takers with this stock? Like, why is it just every, why is just the overwhelming buying pressure? You got to ask yourself, somebody knows something, right? Somebody knows something here. That those growth rates, when maybe it comes to U.S. commercial, is just the start of things. And we got a long way to go here because this is way too much buying pressure day after day after day after day. It was starting to remind me a little bit of NVIDIA last year. It really is, right? This is a move since earnings. It's over a 50% move, folks. Over a 50% move since before earnings. That's shocking. Shocking move, okay? And just, I mean, every dip, every time this stock dips at all, every dip is bought right up. Every time you think, okay, looks like people are really there to take profits on Palantir now. It's bought right up, right up, right up. So pretty fascinating, pretty dang fascinating. Now, this is a one-year chart of Palantir. The stock's up 229% in the past one year. And this latest move is straight parabolic. It's a straight parabolic move. This is the type of move you get in a stock when people say there's a fundamental change in the business model. That's when you get that sort of move. This move right here, fundamental change in the business model. What was this move here? This was a fundamental change in the income statement of Palantir, where they went from, oh, this is a big money losing company to, whoa, they're starting to make money. This is going to be a profitable company moving forward, right? And then this latest parabolic move here, which is very similar to this one, this one is based upon, oh my gosh, the growth rates of this company are going to be insane over the next few years. Got to get on board, right? So it's a, different, it's a different reason for the parabolic move, but it's a parabolic move nonetheless. I mean, my gosh, this is since the end of December of 2022, which is what, 14 months ago or so? 
Stock is up 317% from that point in time. Shocking move, right? I try to see my best shares I have for a percent gain, and it's these ones here. Uh, these ones were acquired on November 22nd, 2022, 300 shares at $7 and 18 cents. And those I'm sitting on a 248% gain right now. So a lot of fun if you're a Palantir shareholder out there. And to be quite frank, it looks like there's just so many, there's so much demand for the stock because people believe this is a fundamentally different company than it was not that long ago, like literally just a week ago. So fascinating, man. And I'd love to hear from any Palantir bulls. Are you taking any profits on this move? Or are you just like, nope, I'm riding this baby for a long time. Or are you in a situation where you're actually buying right now? Let me know in the comments section. I'm very interested from any, any Palantir bulls because there are people that are actually, you know, they already have good positions built and they're like, I need more. 24 bucks for Palantir is a joke because they believe Palantir is 50, $100 in the future, right? PayPal and Palantir stocks. So first off, obviously both of these companies reported earnings last week, right? Last week was, you know, a lot of people looked at it as the big week and, and last week was extremely important. But for the stock prices, this upcoming week's actually more important, okay? In terms of the earnings, we all know the numbers by now, right? Palantir, they reported a grade A income statement. The numbers were phenomenal pretty much across the board. So great income statement out of Palantir. PayPal, record, it was a grade A income statement from PayPal as well. Absolutely phenomenal numbers for both of these companies, right? Now, there's a whole different level of excitement around these companies that we're about to get into, right? But in terms of if I just had to grade the income statements, both of them were grade A's. They were both very, very good, right? Now, the performance of these stocks could not be different. In the past five days, PayPal stock was down, you know, 4.6%. Now, by the way, that was a bullish move on, on Friday. The fact that that stock was up about five percentage points, very, very bullish, right? But nonetheless, stock down 4.6% in the past five days. Palantir stock, it is just ridiculous. 40 5.68% gain in the past five trading days, right? I mean, you couldn't get more <laughs> different results out of these two companies in terms of stock price. Absolutely shocking move in regards to that. Palantir has gone up so much, I'm now sitting on 175% gain in the public account on that one versus PayPal sitting on a 5.73% loss, right? Big, big difference there, right? Now, Wall Street, hey, did you guys see what Wall Street said about both these stocks? just the past few days, okay? Because there is a huge divergence of opinion from Wall Street on both these stocks. Let me show you, because uh, I don't know, I don't think a lot of you guys really get to see all the analysts' upgrades and downgrades and price targets that just came out in the past few days. Let me show you those here, okay? Check this out. B of A Securities adjust price target on Palantir Technologies to $24 from $21. They maintain their buy rating, right? That's a very bullish kind of sentiment uh, for Palantir. The, the interesting thing is it already blew away their price target because Palantir is already over $24, right? And whenever analysts are talking about these price targets, they're a 12 month price target almost always, okay? So, and by the way, this is insane. The target range for the stock overall be, between all the different analysts, between $5 and $30. That's one of the most insane like differences I've ever seen, right? You were talking about a 6X, a 6X in the difference of you know what one analyst thinks this is a five dollar stock twelve months from now, and you know another analyst thinks it's a thirty dollar stock. That's absolutely mind blowing, right? Deutsche Bank, you know I love Deutsche Bank. They adjusted their price target on Palantir Technologies to eighteen dollars from twelve dollars. They did maintain their sell rating when it comes to Deutsche Bank. Now the interesting thing about this is right is here we have somebody that's bearish, right? If you've got a sell rating on a stock, you're clearly bearish on it. There's no other way of sugarcoating it. You're bearish, but we have a bear here that is basically saying, you know, we're not nearly as bearish as we once were, right? When you up your price target from 12 to 18, hmm, that's, you know, that's a, there's a pretty bullish <laughs> rise in terms of, you know, what you're expecting there. Because think about this for a moment. You know, if you're upping it from 12 over to 18, that's way over a 50% rise there. Think about that for a moment, right? Mizuho, they're big firm out there. They raise their price target now. They're staying neutral. I don't call this neutral. You raise your price target to $18 from $16. The stock's at $24. You know, I don't think that's really neutral. 
I, don't know, I couldn't call it, how could you say you're neutral on this if you expect the stock to go down a lot over the next 12 months? So these are, this is where, you know, analyst community is like, you know, they're getting a little more bullish, even a person that's neutral bringing up their price target, but they're still not completely behind Palantir, right? But it's still, if you had to say he's a bullish or bearish, it's definitely bullish because you had the, the guys on the sell side bringing up their numbers. I mean, pretty much everybody across the board, right? Even Kramer, Jim Kramer came out and called Palantir a buy, buy, buy this week. He said, despite contra controversial CEO Alex Karp's insanity is growing on him, which is interesting, right? Wow. Wow. What a, what a change. No. Very, you know, if we look at PayPal, there's a very different, uh, you know, kind of vibe going on here, right? PayPal recently downgraded by two financial firms, including DZ Bank, which, you know, they basically took their, their rating from a buy to a hold. They also took their price target down to 60 bucks, which is roughly where the stock is right now, right? That's rough. That's rough. Their previous price target they had was $76. So they're basically saying PayPal stock's going nowhere for the next year, right? Argus, they just downgraded PayPal to a hold from a buy. So now they're kind of moving more into the neutral category. And yeah, so that's kind of like, okay, okay, we're, we're moving down there, right? Now, it's interesting. JP Morgan, they are, you know, they're talking about being overweight PayPal, but there's something fishy going on here, right? Because they're talking about overweight PayPal, but their price target, they just cut their price target, one. Two, their price target's only 70 bucks. You know, that's not that that high from here. We're we're trading just under sixty bucks right now, right? So to say in twelve months from now it's a seventy dollar stock, that's a that's kind of bearish. And the fact that once again they cut their price, I think that's kind of bearish. But yet they have an overweight rating, right? This is where analysts, uh, you know, ratings and these sorts of things kind of get confusing. Look at this here, price target JMP Securities. They maintained with a sixty eight dollar share price. That's pretty darn low. Twelve months from now. As far as BMO Capital, they said the stock's just going to perform with the market. So basically what that means is, let's say the S&P 500 goes up 5% the next 12 months, PayPal goes up 5% the next 12 months. If, let's say the S&P 500 goes down 10% the next 12 months, PayPal goes down 10% the next 12 months. Okay, that's just the best way to kind of look at that. PayPal is maintained at a buy by Citigroup here, right? But here we go again. They're supposed to be bullish, but they just cut their price target from 76 to 73 so that's that's bullish. Like like, how can you have a buy rating and, and say you're bullish when you're cutting price targets left and right for your 12 month price targets? Like that that's just you know I, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So over overall, I would say Palantir has more bullish momentum on the Wall Street side than PayPal does. And keep in mind, there's still people skeptical of Palantir, but it's more toward the bullish side than PayPal from Wall Street. What about retail investors, right? So retail investors, here's what I'll tell you, okay. When it comes to Palantir, there's really only two groups of folks in, in regards to Palantir now at this point in time. You have the group that is extremely bullish on Palantir. And these folks, you know, I, I've listened to some of these folks, and they say even though the stock is up massively, 45% in the past five days, they say they're buying the stock next week, they're buying the stock the another week after, they're buying the stock next month, and they're going to continue to buy the stock and load up on shares because they still view 20 something dollars as a joke price. Some of these folks expect Palantir to be a $50, $100, several hundred dollar stock a few years from now. So if they can get shares in the 20s, they view this as like, you know, disgusting undervaluation in their opinion, right? So you have that group, but then we have another group of folks in regards to Palantir. You have the folks that are extremely bearish and are saying Palantir stocks run too, way too fast. It's valuations pushed way too much. It's not an attractive risk reward. And so I've actually seen some folks out there, especially on like X, for instance, they've opened up put positions on Palantir in the past few trading days. Now, I can tell you a lot of them are already down massively on that, but I understand there's like those, there's those two groups. There's really not a neutral group on Palantir from the retail investor side from what I see. It's either like people are really like, this is still a steel deal or like, they're like, dude, this is way overvalued. This baby's going back to 15 bucks, right? When it comes to PayPal, what I'm noticing from the retail side is we have a lot of timid bulls right now, which are people that are bullish on PayPal, but they're not going to say it with their chest, really. They're kind of a little scared. They're kind of like bullish, but shh, they're kind of on the DL, right? And then we have this group, which is a lot of frustrated waiting bulls. What do I call a frustrated waiting bull? What does that mean? These are individuals in which they're holding PayPal shares right now, but they're not happy with the stock. They're not happy with the CEO or the company. They're not going to buy the stock right now. 
they're basically also not going to sell the stock. They're waiting to next quarter. They're waiting to see what happens next quarter. What are the numbers looking like next quarter, the conference call, and then they're going to make their decisions at that point in time, whether they want to get out of the stock or whether they want to buy a bunch more shares. But for right now, they're just staying put. So if they got, you know, 100 shares of PayPal, they're not selling those 100 shares, but they're also not buying those 100 shares. And that's an overwhelming consensus I see from people out there. They're frustrated. There was a lot of hope that PayPal, this was going to be the earnings that got the stock moving. We were going to be pushing 70, 75 bucks right now instead of 58, 59 bucks, right? A lot of people thought that's where we were going and it didn't happen. And so now they're just kind of sitting around and they're just like, I'll wait on this one, right? And so I've spoken to several of these folks. This is how they feel, right? And you might say, how do I gauge retail investor sentiment? I literally think I'm one of the best people in the world to gauge retail sentiment. And I truly mean that all the way through. I don't think there's anybody in the world that has as much data as I have on a daily basis, right? I have the big dog channel, right? Which, you know, I, I go through comments almost every single day, Monday through Friday. At some point in time, I'll read through a bunch of comments, right? I don't get to see every single comment, but I'll read through a good amount. And also, usually when the videos first come out, I'll try to, you know, be around to heart some comments in that first 10, 20, 30 minutes, something like that, right? And so I might even respond to some comments in that first 10, 20, 30 minutes whenever a video is released. Then they have this channel, right? Which, although this channel doesn't have the biggest subscriber base, 39,000 subscribers, which, by the way, is an all-time high, uh, you know, it gets really good views, this channel, right? I mean, usually a lot of these videos are 20,000 plus views. So I get a lot of comments and hear from a lot of people on this channel as well. On top of that, I'm pretty active on X. And so I get to see the sentiment out there. And I don't just get to see the sentiment in terms of if people are responding to my post, but I also look out there and see what other people are posting, right? Then on top of that, I have my Instagram following, which Instagram, I probably on a light day, I probably get about 10 to 15 DMs on a heavy day. I'm probably getting 40 to 50 DMs on Instagram a day, right? And just that's a huge sentiment gauge I get to see constantly as well. Then I have my group of super investors in the private stock group, right? Which we have, you know, well over a thousand members in there. And a ton of those folks have six, seven plus figures in their stock portfolios. So you get to see the sentiment kind of what people are feeling like how confident they are or not. And then this is new data out here. I have the 11th most popular Patreon in the whole finance category. So I get to see sentiment there as well. And if that wasn't enough, I have my Twitch channel with the live chat going whenever I do an earnings report and I get to see exactly, you know, what people are talking about, what people are saying, what the vibes are like and all those sorts of things. And so like, I'm just in a position where I get to see exactly how retail feels in any given moment, right? Now, when it comes to Palantir, here's the deal, okay? If this stock can go $24, if this stock is just where it is right now, at this time next week, extremely bullish. Extremely bullish. This is a week in which a lot of people are going to consider cashing out some of their Palantir shares because it had the huge run, 45% in five days. So this is one of those weeks that people, and then recently it's kind of flatlining. So this is a moment in time where some people are going to sit around, they're going to say, Maybe, maybe I want to cash some Palantir shares, right? And so if they cash some shares, then we got the selling pressure there, right? And so, you know, maybe the stock goes down 23, 22, 21 at this time next week. If we're, if we're 21 or under, I would say that's pretty bearish for the stock here over the next few months. But if we're 24 plus, oh my gosh, at this time next week, there's extreme bullishness in regards to Palantir, okay? Even if we can just hold the gains. When it comes to PayPal, if this stock goes 60 plus, plus in the next week, I would say that's very bullish for the stock. The one thing we don't want to see in regards to PayPal, if you're hoping the stock can get moving over this next few months, is you don't want to see the stock weaken and be lower next week because we have some big factors out there. And I think we have a couple big buyers that are going to be out there this coming week. Okay, here's the deal. We know PayPal just announced they are going to, they want to do at least $5 billion with buybacks this year, right? Well, so unofficially, a company's buy it buyback blackout period, which some of you guys might not know this, okay? But and this is unofficial, but it's kind of like, you know, I would call it a little bit of a standard. Unofficially, a company's buyback blackout period generally lasts from the last two weeks of the quarter until after 48 hours it announces its quarterly earnings results, right? So this would mean PayPal can get back out there in the market and buy the stock aggressively starting this week if they choose to do so. 
being where the stock is priced right now and being that they already announced a layoff and everything like that, I think PayPal is going to be very active in the market. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if they buy back an immense amount of shares this coming week. You can't know for sure, but I think that's a real possibility. So we got that big dog buyer in the market, right? And then on top of that, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Altim Altimeter Capital, Brad Gersner, who, you know, is, is I would say pretty popular out there, out there, he started a small stake in PayPal here recently. He says, as, as owners, we have a 15-year-plus track record of calling and how we see it. Whether we become a bigger investor in PayPal depends on how convinced we are that the management and the board are truly committed to getting fit to real change. It is hard, but there's no doubt flatter and faster and simpler is better. One thing that we will, will not do is stick around to try to change the board of, of, of management if they lack commitment. We are not activists, right? So Brad Gerstner started a small position in PayPal. I don't know how he feels about those earnings. I don't know how he feels about where the company's headed. But if he liked what he saw in those earnings in the income statement and he likes where the management team's focused and where they're taking this company and the buyback and all those sorts of things, I wouldn't be surprised if he builds up that position quite considerably given where the valuation's at and given where the growth rates are likely expected at in the few next few years, right? So we'll see. Like we, Once again, we're not going to know, but there's a potential other big buyer out there, right? And I would say there's a high probability that the shares today are trading lower than whenever he started his small stake here. Very high probability. So moral of the story is, you know, we might have him out there as a big buyer this week as well, okay? And also you might have me as a buyer this week as well, okay? Now, both of these stocks are in my mag six in the public account, which are the six most important positions in the public account. These are the six positions I have over $100,000 invested in right now. And so, you know, regardless of what happens this week or doesn't happen this week, you know, obviously I, I'm extremely bullish on PayPal over the next three to five years and extremely bullish on Palantir over the next five years. But we'll see. This is a big week for those stocks overall, okay? And so, uh, yeah, we'll see where it all transpires. If you got a guess on where these stocks are at this time next week, Put it down there in the comment section, okay? Appreciate y'all joining me as always. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Once again, if you're looking to join my group of super investors, check out pinned comment down there. You can fill out an application to join us in there this week. Get access to all my course curriculums, access to the Discord chat, all those different things, okay? And the exclusive videos I put out for you each and every week, okay? All right, you guys, much love and have a great day.